Hello, Dan Housen here. Dan Housen here to let you know that you are watching Dre41 Gaming. They do video games of some sort. Who knows? Dan Housen doesn't. But they are very nice, very evil. Do time. And if you do not watch this channel, you shall rue the day. It crashed, and it never loaded again. Well, you know, 20 is... 20. 20 is, 20 is a paperweight. I know this nigga didn't hit record. Oh, I, it's one o'clock. It's one o one. I didn't have a choice here. I thought you bought the joint. I did. What's up, y'all? It is your boy Dre Forty One, and welcome to another episode of the Let's Talk podcast. We got the co-host here, Ken Washington, who's just belittling me at the very beginning of this podcast. You For make no it like it's something new. This is a back and forth daily thing. It's Listen, he's 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 feeling himself because he went to Ashe, or whatever. He got to see some folks that I wanted to see, so it's cool. It's cool. I invited you, so don't don't try like, to I sit just, there. I, I just show up, you know. Yeah. I, I, okay. I just showed up at your at your neck of the woods. That, that's not no. That's different. That's different. You, no, no, no. There was already a trip. All right, but that's not the. I still showed up in your neck of the woods, though. But it was a part of an already existing, a pre existing trick. Right, I just added to it. See? That's what friends do. See, I could have got you a ticket. That, you know what? what? What are we doing here today? All right, so today we're going to be talking about uh, the, the game that just came out, WWE 2K24. Uh, but the funny thing is, right, I told Ken this. Um, I, I didn't tell him who's the special guest uh, going to be. I didn't tell him, and I I wanted to be a surprise. Yeah, he sold me. Yeah, I did. And um, again, nothing new. I try. You know what I'm saying? We gotta. You know what I'm saying? We gotta get this. You know. You to know. You like, I don't know who sells me more. Mm, she, she, <laughs> that definitely not me. No, she, she sells you more. He you does. Know, wow. <laughs> He does. It's, it's pretty bad. Basic and tired, and that shit he be coming up with. <laughs> All right, we ain't gonna do that here. We ain't gonna do that here. <laughs> We're not gonna do that here. <laughs> I have nothing bad to say at all. Our uh, co ego powers member. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> we could. That's a whole episode. <laughs> you cold as ice. <laughs> you are cold as ice. But no, yeah. So we're gonna be talking about. Um, WWE 2K24. So, oh, look what we have here. Here we go. My man. Hey, what's up, man? What's going on, bro? Oh, man, chilling. It's, you know, nice little Saturday afternoon, you know, just chilling in the house. It's a little bit cold, but, you know, it's so, all right. Some pre Thanksgiving St. Patrick's flavor going on, maybe? Not no, nothing like that. I'm I'm out in the middle of nowhere, so uh <laughs> there's nothing going on. Mm, I hear you, man. I live in a small town too. I live in Haddonfield because of course I do. Which oh, is the stupidest thing, you know? Makes perfect sense. Perfect it, it, sense. It's part of the cosmic joke that is my life. <laughs> I hear that. And for all the folks that are watching, uh, we have a producer as one of our uh, guests on today's show. We have Steve Barton. You might know him from the Terrifier franchise that made so much money. So, so much. So much. <laughs> I mean, ridiculous. It, it It's it's still kind of like clicking, you know? It, right. It, it, those things. But, yo, this is such a pleasure for me, man. I want to tell you that because... Like, I've been a wrestling fan for my whole life, right? And, of course, video games are always my shit, too. Can right. I curse on this? <laughs> Let it fly. <laughs> Whatever. All right, good. And uh, when video games, when wrestling video, I mean, I played every fucking one of them, you know? Right. And then when they started letting you download, gu download guys, mm -hmm. I found this motherfucker, right? <laughs> and I'm like, Wow, this is some next level stuff, man. Mm. And 
it became like a tradition every year. Me and my friends would look up Dre 41, you know? Oh, man. Thank you. And literally, I've been downloading your stuff for like 10 years, right? <laughs> well, your head about wow. to explode. No, it's <laughs> true, man. I mean, so then I don't even know how we started talking. I think I, we found each other. Who's on Twitter? We're going to call it Twitter, even though it's X. But if you type in Twitter. Yeah, it's Twitter. Yeah. So I was like, man, now I get to just tell this cat that, <laughs> yo, I'm a fan. You know yeah. what I mean? And it, it was always bugged out to me because like having a Dre creation was like having another wrestler that was just as good as anyone else in the game you know i mean the level of detail especially on the costumes and the move set it was like straight up on point Thank so you. i you know i always dabbled a little bit you know uh mm -hmm. my brother is a super good artist but you know in terms of artistry I wanted that to be his thing. You know what yeah. I mean? I needed to find my thing. And my thing ended up being horror movies. Mm. And telling and talking to people and producing and writing. And then I, then one, I think it was like three years ago we, when we first started talking, yeah. I'm like, I need to see what this cat is doing. Right? So I, I started digging deep into the creator wrestler. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, what does this do? And every day I would spend a little bit more time on like one area, you know, and learn exactly what it could did and do in terms of molding, in terms of shading. And then they go and fuck it up every year. Every time I get used to one thing, it's like, oh, it's back, but now it's different. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You're preaching to the choir. <laughs> yeah. But I've, because of his work being so good i wanted to try to be able to sort of do that not that i could compete dre got me beat. oh no nah, so, no oh, you, see, you was coming up with some ideas like the messages you would send me like and just, even the most recent ones with the um opacity gone and you're using it as like just to show more detail within the face that's stuff that when would i ever use that you know what i'm saying like that's that's the creativity that you that you bring out like just messing around with it like you just said so it's just like with creativity like that man you you have your own corner right there like as even like a horror call creator you know what i'm saying so that's that's great within itself thank you that's where i tried to find my bag you know i was like all right what if there was somebody like dre but made horror characters <laughs> you know what right. i mean because yeah. Drake is banging horror characters, too, every October. But for me, it's October all year, you know? Yeah. So I was like, what if what if I could kind of learn how to really do this? And But I didn't want to make, like, Freddy and Jason and, and fucking Ghostface. Cause, yeah, oh, the go-tos. You know? Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to make the B team into the A team, right? So I started mining, right? I'm like, all right. Funhouse, boom, Gunther. <laughs> and Cropsy, boom, the burning. You know, and it just, yeah. it just kept, and you know what? I'm an asshole. I'm so sorry. Washington, we've never even met. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> good, yo. I'm doing good. I'm like, this, this I'm, the co host. The co host. I'm just sitting here fawning over Dre, and I'm like, this motherfucker <laughs> right there. I ain't said a word to him yet. No, you're you're good. I'm just I'm just over here getting the bag together for when his head explodes. Like I said, See, I, I didn't tell him you were going to be on the on yeah. the podcast today. I, yeah, I left he just surprise. left me in the dark for this time, so I'm just over here like, oh hey, hi, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta I, mess with him. I gotta mess with him. I show up like a scorching case of herpes, man. It's like when you <laughs> least expect that shit, you know. It's like boom, <laughs> I'm here. <sighs> oh man. Hey. Uh, but okay, so let's does. let's get it, let's get into it initially. Like as like a fan of of horror movies, I know for me, like the first time I got into horror was watching Child's Play when I was like seven or like six by myself. Scared the hell out of me, yeah. and that's what really got me into horror movies. What was it for for you? Oh man, see, I'm old as fuck, yo. I'm <laughs> I'm one gonna be fifty two. I don't know. Who said that was okay? I think I missed that meeting. <laughs> you know, growing up in New York, uh, 
it didn't take me long to realize that the good shit was on late at night, you know? So I would, I would have this thing I would do. I would listen for my parents to start snoring. And then I knew once they were asleep, I could go in the living room and put on the TV and find some wild shit to watch, right? <laughs> this was like, I was three years old, bro. And this was the 70s, you know? So we what? had this... We had this giant black and white console TV, like the kind of kind of TV that breaks and then you just put shit on top of it and it's furniture now. You never that thing just never leaves the house. Yeah, my grandma has one of them. That's what I'm saying. So I turn on the TV one night and I see this newscast about the dead coming back to life. And I'm like, what the fuck? Right? So at three years old, my little mind is blown, right? So I, I race into my parents' bedroom, and I wake them up. I'm like, yo, we got to go. The dead are coming. We got to get to rescue stations. I literally, vividly remember saying that. And, um, yeah, man, my dad was pissed. But uh, <laughs> I, I dragged them both out of bed, you know, and they were like, oh, you're dreaming. I'm like, I'm not dreaming. It's on TV. So I brought them into the living room, and I, I pointed to the TV and, and looked. I was like, look, see? And it was Night of the Living Dead. You know, there's a wow. scene in that with a newscaster reporting about the dead coming back to life. So I got my first ass whipping that night, you know? <laughs> and uh, as my little lily white, now red as hell ass was sitting in bed throbbing, I realized that I was so terrified, but mm. absolutely safe. You know, and that was wild. You know, I was like, how, where else could I get that kind of experience, that kind of adrenaline rush? And um, from there, I just started watching horror movies like incessantly. Mm -hmm. My dad, he was an alcoholic, real bad dude. So, and my mom was working like all the time. So the TV is kind of where I grew up, you know? So I mm -hmm. learned a lot of my social values from watching George Romero movies and, mm. and that. And, uh, you know, my first job as an Italian kid in, in New York was obviously working in a pizzeria. That's what we do, right? So I spent a, a whole summer working to save up to buy Night of the Living Dead on VHS. Now, wow. back in the day, VHS, when it first came out, that shit was like a hundred bucks. What? Yes. Yes. Wow. So I told you I'm old as fuck, yo. So, <laughs> so that was my first job, the first thing I ever bought with my money, you know. And just like I was always that kid, you know. Everyone else had sports figures, cars, you know, women hanging on their walls. I had Freddy, Jason, Leatherface, Pumpkinhead, you know, Reverend Kane from Poltergeist. I had all that mm -hmm. shit. And it, my mom used to say to me, you know maybe you should try to find a trade or, or, or a, an interest that'll, you know, eventually make money. And I did, but I didn't change my trade, right? <laughs> I, I just put what I loved and what I enjoyed doing to work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, years later, uh, I met George, you know, mm -hmm. and I told George my stories and he and I became really good friends. He became mm. a mentor to me. And he put me in his last movie as one of the featured zombies. So I got to tear some motherfucking shit up. Yes. And that was that was my life coming full circle, you know? Because mm -hmm. like three years old to this, now I'm being directed by this man. And he taught me so much about the mm. industry. And I had two mentors. It was George and it was Sid Haig. From House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects, me and Sid rolled deep. Uh, we were always together. There was a point in the whole horror convention scene where we were always on the road. It was like at a different point in time. We were at a, in a different city, in a different place, and we were always together. It was like it was like a road family, you know. And mm -hmm. so, like any family, you you find your tribe in the middle right. of that shit. So. George and Sid, they were my tribe, and literally, they're the only reason I've been able to find some sort of success, because, I mean, that's like 
two fucking legends guiding you. Right. And uh, how lucky am I? That's like Bigfoot saying you're cool enough to know he exists. <laughs> right. So right. it was really cool. And I just, I kept, I mean, I've worked with everybody from fucking Rob Zombie to George Romero. You know, I, I, I uh, one of the first things I did was I started a website, you know, hmm. and uh, the website's dreadcentral.com. It's still out today. I was editor in chief of that for 18 years. And, wow. then, and then I split because I felt like, number one, I didn't like we, me and my partner had a disagreement and I didn't like the direction they wanted to go in. And I'm. I'm Mr. Integrity. I don't like your shit. I'm going to tell you, you know, right. and I right. tell you what you, what you want to hear, but I'll tell you what you need to hear. And some people mm. don't respond to that. Right. That's true. Very true. I left. And then I was like, well, what do I do now? You know, I had this name, uncle creepy. Everybody knows me, you know, and right. you know, 30 years ago when I was starting my career, had I had known the connotations, that name was, <laughs> I would have been a lot <laughs> more selective, but you know, hey, man, I made it through all that Me Too shit. The guy named Uncle Creepy came out scot-free, you know? And Who would have thought? <laughs> that's because it's easy to just be a good person, you know? You you have to go out of your way to be an asshole. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, and my mom, who basically with George Romero, <laughs> she didn't know that was going on, but... um. They taught me to treat everyone the same. You know, I never say things like, oh, well, Dre, he's my black friend. No, that's incidental racism. You know, yeah. he's my friend. I don't give a fuck if you're Argyle colored, right? If, right? There's only two types of people. There's assholes and there are people who are cool, you know? And once you realize that, you, you treat people how you want to be treated. And everyone right. is the same, and we're all the same, and we're just, we're all on this weird fucking journey together trying to figure out where we fit in this world, you know? Right. Yeah. So, so that, go ahead. Oh, no. Oh, my, my question was, like, in regards to, like, Sid and George being, like, two of your mentors, what were, like, the two, well, from each one of them, what were most important things that you learned from them? That's a really good question. I, I don't think anyone's ever asked me that question. I've done a million of these. Um, <laughs> from George, the most important thing George ever taught me was he said to me, and he, he sounded like such a hippie too, you know? He was like this old hippie guy. So he said, Steve, man, I want to tell you something. Whatever you do in life, whatever you start, Make sure that you finish it. And I was like, well, what do you mean, George? He goes, there are so many people out there, and it's true, that start something. And then they just it just either goes unseen or it just blows in the breeze or it falls by the wayside. So he made me promise him that whatever I try to start doing, I finish it. And I take mm -hmm. it to where... To the conclusion I want it to be. So with Dread Central, for instance, you know, one of the things that I had a huge argument with my partners over was Terrifier, you know, because I was like, you know, they this company bought. We never had a parent company until the one of the crashes of the dot coms. We were always independent, mm -hmm. and one of the things we wanted to do, the people who came in to purchase us, they were like, well, we want to spin dread central off into a video label so i was like all right that works for me and uh you know i'm looking at all these movies they're sending me and they all suck you know and i'm like yeah it's true man just because you could give somebody sauce cheese and and, and dough doesn't mean they can make you a pizza you know right That's so true. so it was like wow what the fuck all of these movies suck and if my name's going on it there's going to be a degree of quality to it right so then uh, Damien Leone wrote me out of nowhere and he was like, hey, Steve, you don't know me, but I got this movie and I'm having problems finding a home for it. I don't know what to do. Do you think maybe you could watch it? Give me a quote. Maybe that'll help. And so I watched the original Terrifier and I'm like, well, what are you doing with this? He's like, we're not doing anything with it. And I'm like, well, stop right there. We're doing something with it. So I went back. Hey, to what year was this? 
2017. Okay. So Terrify has been around for a minute. People just didn't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it was 2017, 2018, somewhere around there. Or 2019. I just drank a lot since then. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, you know, I brought them this movie and everybody hated it. They were like, oh, this is bullshit. It's a, another killer clown movie. Blah, blah, blah. And then this was at a time when it was very successful at the box office, right? So, like, no one needs another clown movie. And I'm like, this is different, you know? Sometimes you got to be able to see the forest through the trees. And I've always been very good at doing that, knock wood. And um, it, I was like, you guys don't understand. This is it. So they reluctantly bought it, you know? And they gave me nothing but hell, you know, from top to bottom. Worst purchase we ever made. Worst this, worst that. We can't sell it. We need to edit it. Blah, 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 blah. And it got to the point with them where I actually said to them, listen, if this movie doesn't deliver like I think it's going to deliver, I will quit. You could have my part of the company. Mm. I think they took me up on that because they thought it was a surefire way to get rid of me. <laughs> you know, they, it was clear that they wanted a yes man, and I'm a lot of things, not a yes man. I'm sure you right. can really tell that already, right? <laughs> so, so the movie came out, and it fucking blew up. It just blew up, and they never said thank you. They never said that you were right. They never said anything like that. So... Mm. Even though Dread Central was my baby, I created it, I ran it, I knew it was then time for me to walk away with it and to bring the world a new horror movie that they all universally love for some strange fucking reason. That was my mic drop moment, you know what I mean? So I started it and I finished it. And that was, I mean, I don't, they're still around. I don't know what the fuck they're doing, but, <laughs> you know... That was the most important thing George ever taught me. And of course, now that I'm doing a podcast, there's motherfuckers outside working. Because why not, right? As they should. It, it, it should happen. So, so y'all clearly aren't as deep in the country as I am because ain't nothing outside but trees in my car. So uh, you won't hear any of that on my end. I, I love that life, bro. I'm t I've grown up in the city all my life. I'll take trees over concrete any day. In New York, in Brooklyn, the only wildlife we had was bums and rats. <laughs> so I'll Facts. take where you live in yeah. a Facts. Yeah, because I, I just I just came back from uh, Queens. And uh, yeah, there's not a lot of trees. Not, yeah. not a lot. Not like, not uh, really. Very you want to see trees? <laughs> go to Central Park. <laughs> well, I'm originally from, there's not a lot of trees, but there, there's where a lot originally of trees. Uh, Maryland, D.C. area. My I'm right outside of Maryland. Maryland is uh, about three hours away from me. So my girl, my wife now, holy shit, I'm married. Uh, <laughs> her family it rolls up on you sometimes. I know, man. It's like I'm just so used to saying my girl. Now it's like my wife. I paid for that shit. Don't make <laughs> me use the warranty. Don't make me use the warranty. Anyway. <laughs> so... So that was like the big thing George taught me. And Sid, Sid was a fucking monster, bro. He was the nicest, nicest, most smartest guy I've ever met. And he did it all, man. He worked with everyone from Lon Chaney to Rob Zombie. That's a birth of a career. Yeah. And um, he taught me how to stand up for myself and not how to let people in their positions of power roll over me, you mm -hmm. know? He taught me that it ain't it it's not about how many times you get told no, it's about the one time you get told yes. That changes everything. And that really resonated for me because you know, I'm I'm a street kid with a GED education, never went to college, never did any of that. Oh. Everything I ever did, I taught myself how to do, like Dread Central. I was hand coding that shit. I didn't know HTML, oh. you know. And Photoshop, I, I taught myself Photoshop. I taught myself how to use the, the car creator, right? I taught myself wow. how to be a writer. I have a book coming out in a couple months. That's my autobiography, you know? Hmm. So it's like I, I just – Sid always told me that it's never no, it's how. 
And right. that's something I take with me. So those are two of the most valuable lessons I think I've ever learned. And now that they're both gone and I miss them incredibly, incredibly much. I mean, it was great when, you know, you could pick up the phone and be like, what do I do? Now it's like, fuck, what do I do? But now I got other cats calling me younger than me, you know, <laughs> young bucks. They're like, well, what do I do? And then I realized all of this information that they had given me, it's now my job to give to them. You right, know, move it forward. Them. So I, I take that very seriously, you know. I, I always try to help people. I never say no to anyone unless they're a complete douche. And uh, <laughs> Sometimes uh, it's to my detriment because uh, a lot of people have gone a lot of places that if it weren't for me, they wouldn't have got there. Oh, wow. So, I, so, so you were also talking about the initial um, success of the Terrifier. How did you feel uh, about the success of it when you basically like put your job on the line for it? How, how did you feel after the success of it? Because I know how I stumbled upon it. Um, on Shutter, and I was like, "Ooh, okay, I like this. Like this, this is this is I can mess with this." I don't remember how I came upon the first one. I just remember watching it, and I was just I was just stuck to it. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, man. I, I've lived a weird life. You know, I, I've had the rug pulled out from under me a hundred times, and it's not a unique story. It happens to all of us, man. Mm -hmm. And. uh when that movie came out and all of a sudden there were people were making murals of art, the clown and fucking buying their own or making their own merchandise. They were making their own t-shirts. That was mind blowing to me. And it was like the best vindication I've ever felt, you know, that, mm -hmm. wow, I was actually right about something and it paid off. And when it came time to do part two, you know, I called Damien. I'm like, dude, I, I got to be a part of this. You know, it's not like it's because it's the only thing I have, which at that time it was. But mm -hmm. it's because my story is so ingrained with that story. Right. And it, it's literally a shared story now. So two came out, uh, was filming for three years, you know, because mm -hmm. of COVID. Uh, but yep. COVID actually kind of helped it in a way because Damien was able to take his time with all the effects and try different things. So that three year delay was very good, I guess. Sucked for everybody else, you know, it sucked for me, it sucked for you guys. You know, we're in we're the only generation in the world that had a had a job to do that literally entailed doing nothing but sitting home and watching TV and we fucked it up. We still found a way to fuck it up. You know? <laughs> We're yeah. Americans. We can find a way to fuck up anything. That's it's amazing. You just stay home with your awesome technology. I need a haircut. Fuck your haircut. You know what I mean? It's well, I'm bald, so you know I, my haircuts. Yeah, this shit ain't no fashion statement. This is a curse. <laughs> okay, that's what this shit is. Oh so, man. So yeah, man. It, I mean, it went on to blow up, and then my career fucking took off and now everybody's doing their thing and and that's wonderful it's funny i have a i have an email box where i just put emails that are sent to me of, of people from people who wouldn't have fucking peed on me if i was on fire wow so i just put them in a file and i look at them every now and then because i got a long ass memory you know what i mean so i'm like nah i ain't working with you so i'm working with the people who i want to work with you know right I could trust because if I can't trust you, I can't work with you. Mm. And there's no amount of money in the world or no promise of riches in the world that could make me do that. I would rather die a pauper with integrity, sorry, honey, than a rich douchebag with no soul. You know what I mean? So right. If I could go to bed at night and put my head on the motherfucking pillow and know that I did everything I could do that day to the best of my ability, I'm mm. good. You know, I don't right. need anything else. And that's that's where I'm at. I got several projects at several different places right now. Uh, there are things cooking that are great. Like I said, I got my book coming out, uh, my autobiography. It's called A Comedy of Tragedies. It'll be out before the summer. And oh, okay. it talks about everything from the 
fucked up childhood to terrifier too. It's just everything is in there. Mm. And I, you know what's funny about that? Like I started writing, I got a lot of demons, you know, like we all do. My story's not unique. Mm. But um, I originally started writing it just to get it out of my system, you know? And my initial intention with writing the book was just to write it and then burn that shit. You know, it's out of me now. But then people started reading some of it that I was writing and they're like, no, this is good. This is really good. I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll continue. And then then George popped into my head. If you fit, if you start something, make sure you finish it. So I was like, all right, it took me <laughs> four years to finish it, you know? All right. And I'm really proud of it. Uh, the people who have read it so far have loved it. You know, it's a story of perseverance. It's about getting knocked down and getting back up because, you know, being happy is easy. You know, when shit's going good and you got nothing but stuff to smile about, life is simple. It, right. It's get knocked down and you're at that lowest point. It's what you choose to do in those moments that are going to dictate who you become and shape your character so i've learned through a lot of adversity to kind of embrace those moments and instead of thinking of them as bad times think of them as exciting times because when you got nothing else to lose you can only go in one direction you know so it's about trying to find your way through that and that's what the book really echoes and if somebody can read that stuff and and know that they're not alone or they can relate to it or they could see that if you just keep putting in the work, stuff will happen. Then I wrote the book for a right reason. Just one person I want to do that. And I'll mm. be happy. So well, I mean Well that, that that's definitely a good thing. And that and that's like to be able to like express yourself and put even regardless of how long it takes to even, you know, do it to be able to express yourself and put it out. That's that I think that's like a really brave thing to do because a lot of people will sit there and keep their stories to themselves. Like they, they you know, they're, they're not interested in like, eh, it happened. I got, you know, whatever I'm going to leave it where it's at. But, but where do you plan on releasing this, uh, this book? It's, it's going to be everywhere. Um, you know, it's okay. funny too. I said, I, I said to my wife, Danielle, I'm like, you know, what's going to be weird. And whenever I say that, she knows to like either put on a seat belt or just like, <laughs> living with me is like a circus all the time. Someone should leave a fruit basket outside our front door for her every morning. Um, you never know what the fuck I'm going to do or say. But I, I said to her, you know what's going to be weird? Once this book comes out, there are going to be a lot of people out there that know everything about me. You know what I mean? Right. And I don't know jack shit about them. So it's going to be strange. But um. We're, we're talking about publishers right now. We're talking about the possibility of self-publishing it because things have gotten different. You know, the game's changed. Right. Uh, there will be an audiobook version. Uh, one of the actors from Netflix's House of Usher is going to be reading it. Nice. Uh, oh. that, that's pretty hey. cool. A cool guy named Mark Redfield who played uh, the pastor in... Because when you think about my life, you instantly think pastor. Uh, <laughs> that's the first. That's the first job that comes to mind. But um, he's going to be reading it, and I'm just excited. It, like I said, if if somebody can be helped by some of the shit I went through, it's just a book of human experience under some extraordinary circumstances, and it, it's a it's very funny because I write like I talk. And it's very tragic because, you know, I've been through a lot. There's a lot in there. It's a wonder I'm not a drug addict or a fucking alcoholic, you know? Mm. It's just a wonder. But I chose not to take that route. I chose not to blame my dad. I chose to find my way. And uh, thank God for video games because it kept me from killing people for real. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, um, I hear that. Yeah, man. So it's it's come a, a lot of circles, and there's a lot more circles yet to be closed. So I'm, I'm excited for a lot of reasons. And you know, he, I, another thing that now I'm sure you could relate to this as a, as creators. You know, you do your best. You know, and you put something out there, and all you see is what's wrong with it. You know what I mean? 
So mm-hmm. Nobody would ever notice. You <laughs> see that, right? Right, right. You get this thing, and it's very real, called imposter syndrome. And mm. I struggle with that every day, regardless of how much I've accomplished or what I got going on. Imposter syndrome is real, you know? And sometimes you got to get out of your own head in order to just get where you want to be. So getting out of your own head is very important. And you know what? It's funny, too, because, like, the shit I deal with, when I go on or on WWE 2K, right, and I make a character, it's like, I'm spending time with an old friend, especially mm-hmm. when I did Sid. I I spent so much time with Sid Haig that I know every fucking angle of that motherfucker's head. You know what I mean? <laughs> so when I do Sid, I, I I sit there and he's usually one of the first I do because I, I just when Terrifier was two was blowing up in the theater, every night that that movie was playing. I bought two front row seats for George and Sid in case through some miracle they could come down and have a blast. And uh, when I make Sid in that, in the game, it's very personal for me. So I want him to be good. And, you know, as, as you could honestly say, as a creator yourself, if you really mine through that creator wrestler suite, which they did a lot more right this year than they did wrong. Right. You know? <laughs> You can give these characters personality. You can yes. give these characters moves that accent their personalities, you know? Right. Make them do things or walk a specific way or specific taunt. So if you take the time, you could literally just, you can make a reasonable facsimile of who that person is or who that right. person was. And all of the things I make, which I labor over. Like I remember I did that. I might do it again this year because the embed tool work, the emboss tool works again. Yeah, uh, it didn't work last year. Uh, That's true. Did a lot didn't work last year, but they only looked at anyway. But um, <laughs> I, I might do that. Remember, I did the tribute piece to John Carpenter's The Thing. Yes, that thing with ah, uh, for fuck, dude. And I'll have it in the video so people can see it. Oh, that! Oh my god, dude! I put so many layers into that fucking thing. And, you know, it's funny because, like, Dre and I, we talk now. So while we're making shit, sometimes we'll send pictures back and forth. And I sent him the picture of that. And he's like, oh, you're going for the gold now. <laughs> I wish I got responses like that when I send him pictures. It's not true at all. You better stop it. Stop it. I got receipts, sir. You be dogging me sometimes. I don't want to no. hear it. I just, I just, here's my thing as far as, like, creating goes. Step out of your comfort zone. That's that's the biggest thing. It's like what's what you're used to, what you're used to. Bless you. That was my wife sneezing. Um, Bless you. <laughs> but um, but my I wife says to- bless you too, and she's sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I tried to tell anybody step out of their comfort zone. If you're used to making one type of character, step away from it. Mm-hmm. Make, put them with something else on. Or try to make something else. Don't stick to one type of genre of a call like try mm-hmm. to to you know do something where it's like oh you know you'll learn like a new creative technique that you never learned before when you step out of the box and that's just what i kind of try to tell people like me i just make for the most part real people so it's just like only and you know like my boy steve was saying only around october when i start making like horror characters you know what i'm saying so it's just like a lot of the times i'm making this person it's like it's not really much to making the person, you know, draw some tattoos, make a face texture, that's it. But it's just like when you get into something where it's like you're not really used to it, that's where you really learn and become like a better creator. So that's that's just my thing. That's that's all. No, that's you're right. You're that's right. not that's not how your messages come off. But yeah, that, that's the general <laughs> that's just the general idea, I guess. Well, well listen, <laughs> I talk to my friends an entirely different way. It's tough love, brother. You know, yeah, I know. I just like giving him uh, a hard time. See, it's funny too because I started making real guys too, so that was my comfort zone. I I could make some pretty good looking real people, but I always found real people was harder to make, you know, than than the things I do now. But mm-hmm. the difference for me now is that I'm doing this for like the horror kids out there on WWE. Um, 
it's different. I, you know, it's different, but I have to make it harder than I than it normally is in order to get the faces to do what I want them to do or move the eyes a certain way. So it's like I have to think about creating these things a completely different way than I would say if I was doing Ric Flair or some shit like that. So right. me, that gets to be, that's where I find the fun. Like I, I like pushing the barriers to see mm -hmm. if I can make something look a certain way, even though in my head and knowing what I'm working with, we know we're cheating. We're yeah. cheating. <laughs> okay. We're totally cheating. And it's okay because nobody knows that but us, right? Yeah. Uh, right. Well, they watch this and they realize we're all full of shit. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's interesting. It, it's like I like I think I have and I'm not back padding there. I, I think I have pushed that creator wrestler as far as it could be pushed in terms yeah. of some of the shit I've come up with. Yeah, and, like I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm looking at it now. It's, it's the last couple of pictures I see is like, that's not I. <laughs> I don't have that much time. I don't think. Well, you know it. You know the key to, and I'm sure Dre, you will echo this like a motherfucker. The key to making good uh, creator wrestlers is not putting a face texture on them. It's putting a face texture on them and then sculpting their head. If you don't got the head sculpt right, you're just mm -hmm. putting a piece of fucking paper on somebody you know what i mean right. it's like you need to sit there and work out how their faces sometimes i'll be on on the couch doing this thing and i look to my wife i'm like yo hold up take your phone out hold up a picture of this person <laughs> yeah because you need i need constant reference you know and so i'm making look, real people absolutely yeah, you you got to look at them from the side, the contour of their nose, what their cheekbones are doing. And a lot of people, when you see these wrestlers that they're making, it's like they're just putting fucking photos on things. And I love the ones. I love going through. One of my favorite pastimes makes me laugh every time is going through the images thing mm -hmm. and seeing the people that don't know how to make them, like their facial features. You know, the people like, you know, they're like, that ain't going to work, bro. You know, you're looking all hard and shit. That ain't gonna work. Or they're smiling. Or they that's what we need to do, Dre. We need we need to take a trip down the uh the call creation. Oh, oh no, we can't go down that rabbit hole. I'm leaving that <laughs> one alone. People get offended very easily now. I don't I don't know if I, But you can know. tell if if you're looking at I guess because I've been dealing with Dre too, so I'll give him his flowers on that. But when I go to like community creations now. And I look at a call's face. I'm like, that's default one. You just slap the texture over it. Mm -hmm. I can tell by just the jawline, and, and it's something that I've, 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 thanks to Dre, I've been, I've been more and more on about because he can tell you what was it, 2K19, where I made like Rihanna and Ice T and Method Man. Oh mm -hmm. my God, it took me so long because I sat there on the heads. The outfits were done. I did the I did the body and the tattoos and then I did the face because it just took so long. I have three monitors. So one monitor had Rihanna's face to the side turned a little bit. And I'm over here on this one doing it was it is a process. So it, anybody uh, watching this, it is a process if it, you want that real face. It's like building Legos, you know? When that's you good, first that's when a good way to put start, it. Start, man. Your shit's a mess. No, it doesn't look like anyone, you know? Yeah. But what gets exciting is when you do that first move. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, wait, I think I see them. You know yeah. what I mean? That's yeah. the first, ex and that's the rush. And then everything after that it is, like, exciting because now you're starting to see who you're making. And you're like, all right, I got this. But then there's also a cutoff point. Would you go too far? Yeah, you go yeah. too far, <laughs> and you're like, you "Motherfucker, don't look anything like it." What happened? Like, damn it! Now I got to start over, yeah. right? And because <laughs> once you go too far, there's no coming back. No, you got to right. start over. Yeah. You got to, you got to delete it and start from scratch. 
it knowing the cutoff point is so crazy. That's the hardest thing. That's like I know when I get to that point is where I'm like, all right, let me just save it where it's at and just look at it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. I stop and I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll come back tomorrow with fresh eyes and see if there's anything I need to change. Yeah. And and that's like the point where you got to just say, don't rush it. Just take your time. Like mass characters, you really don't have to worry about. It. You don't have to do any movements, anything, no morphing. But like the one thing that I always say is start with the best template. Mm -hmm. And that takes a that takes time. It's like, all right. Let me try to morph with this template. Nah, the, the, this template doesn't have the right nose for this character. Let me try this one. And you, you're jumping from template to template. And that's like the one big thing that I'm doing this year because they changed how the face textures look. Like they have more detail on them. Because if you look at 23 and 24, face yeah, textures yeah. look completely different. They look so different. Yeah, and it's just like, wait a minute, this worked last year. What? <laughs> What is, what is going on here? Like, the, the the worst part for me is, and I don't know if you make yourself, but making myself in the in the game takes me longer than probably it does just a regular one. Mm -hmm. Like I'm still. How many times have I changed my head, Dre? I'm. I'm you you see that's why you got to trust the process. You just gotta. What I did trust it, and then she never mind. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you was about to throw someone under the bus. That's why I, I, I was about to launch him too. But yeah, no, I, it, I don't know. Like I said, if you make yourself, do you think it would take you longer to make yourself because you know how picky you are with your own face? Or I tried once, and I'm like, nah, I ain't doing this. Because then, because you know what happens, your your whole your whole your whole brain starts taking over. Like you know, maybe I could lose a couple of inches here. And then you start lying because you want to want to see yourself in a certain light. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like in in bullshit games, like whatever that don't have an extensive uh, creator character. It's always a bald guy with a goatee. There's a hundred of me. I'm everywhere. There's eighteen people right now, bald head and goatee, somewhere in your vicinity. You know. So I do right. that. But when it, well, I have one year, my friend BJ, who's also a creator. He made me as the zombie in uh, George's movie, Survival of the Dead. And that shit was wild, you know, because he, <clears throat> when someone else could capture you way better than you can capture yourself. Yeah. You yeah. know, because you start, you're like, well, what if my nose was a little smaller? You know? <laughs> right. Right. And that's, yo, know, that, that's the same thing that I was like having like the biggest issue with. And it's like taking a good reference photo of myself. And it was just like, I don't, I don't like the lighting in this one. I, I got to do another one. And then it was like, nah, I, I don't know. My head looked too round in this picture. I don't think my head like shaped like that. Yeah, before you know so it, it, half your phone is taken up with pictures of you trying to figure out the right you, one. <laughs> you, know what, you know what the one thing I hate? They haven't found a remedy. It's been like this every year. When you, when you take a design, like say the rectangle, right? And you want to cover a certain area, and then all of a sudden it starts moving over to the other side of the body. You know what I mean? I don't like, like, like that. When it just warps. That. Yeah. yeah it, it just, just warps. Just, over. You're, I'm sitting there on the right leg, and, and with Art the Clown, you know, I, it's a lot of fucking design. You know, it's a lot. It's a simple design, but it's still a lot. Of, and even switch mapping only helps so much. You know, so. Mm -hmm. It's like I have these areas, like right by his crotch, there's one area where it's not like equal black and white. And no matter what I do, if I try to fill in that little area, it'll automatically appear on the white leg. And I'm like, motherfucker. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we all see shit that nobody else will see, mm -hmm. but it drives us crazy, you know? That's yeah. the one I wish they'd fix. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. I mean, as far as like, call modes go, I feel they have the best one. Point, you know, hands down. They, they, you can't really argue the case that they don't. I mm -hmm. just feel like it takes I feel like they what they need is taking people who actually create and really taking advice from those people go. to fix it. Not not even to fix it. Just to make it better. Yeah. That's it. Just okay, let's let's do this, let's do that. The one thing that I feel like they need to do, add more masks. 
that that's something that they've been slacking on for years. Like the most they've ever done was add a bunch of Rey Mysterio masks. And they're all the same. They're just color variants. And it's just like, I can't do anything with these. No. Yeah, yeah, but like, you, you got to think, I believe, and I will stand by this one. Uh-oh. They're going to hate me too. I believe that they go down their own community creations and they see how many people just upload the basic of things and just throw any kind of old mask on there. And they're like, hey, if we put these 18 variations of Rey Mysterio's mask with just different colorways, they'll use them. And that's how they get like, because yeah. the worst calls will have like 3,000 downloads. And I'm sitting here wondering why, how, who I- found this? There is a cat out there right now that's made, it's one person, he has made every conceivable variation of Sting. Every Jenna. Jenna. Oh, holy shit, dude. Shout outs to Jenna. Man. I mean, if I'm like, I wonder what Sting looked like in 1994. Oh, just look him up. <laughs> you know, it, it's amazing. I, I take my hat off to some of those people, man. They... When, when that's the thing about wrestling fans, we love this shit. We know, yeah, it. yeah. You know what I mean? But we don't. Care. It's our soap opera, you know. Basically. Yeah. You know, it's like, like you know, people. Some women like you know romance, and we like seeing people in spandex beating the shit out of each other. <laughs> hey, <laughs> gotta get that fixed somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. You know? that- that's there's been so many cool things. I, I really like this year's creator wrestler, but you know what I give 2K props for? So have you noticed I didn't complain about one thing this year? Because every year it comes out, Dre and I are like our psychiatrists. Man, why they gotta do that? You know what? I mean? <laughs> or, or how yeah, did last year we did that. But today, this year's the first time since they started putting him in the game that they put Rick Rude's fucking tattoo on him, the anchor. Yes. And I was like, wow, they finally remembered his tattoo. And they and they actually updated his face too. Yeah. And they updated Scott Hall's face. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There is now the younger razor. He's not like Scott Hall with a different hair. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's and that's just little things where I just feel like, man, you've been giving us these same models every year. Like, here's the thing, right? And me like being or helping with a, another game. It's like the wrestling code, of course. It's like, I know how long it takes to remodel a face. And it's just like, it doesn't take six months. It doesn't, it it takes you two weeks. If that, Mm -hmm. you know, if you got a really good designer, it takes you two weeks to remodel the face Mm -hmm. because it's, it's structure, restructuring. Okay, cool, cool. And then they put the framework in as, as long as the same software that they're using that fits the framework, there's no problem. Mm-hmm. So it's just like sometimes I, I feel like they just copy and paste, and it's just like, guys, like this is, you know, the premier wrestling game. Y'all don't have to copy and paste. If there's mm-hmm. updates that need to be made, make them. It shouldn't be that difficult, you know. And I mean, I, I don't know because I, I don't work for them, so I, I've been petitioning. Clearly, you'll we'll never work for them, Drake. They should just... hire you, bro. Uh, I'm... Hey, no, whoa, they, whoa, they won't. Whoa, See, whoa. There you go. <laughs> He's on Ooh. he's on blacklist already. I'm, I'm on I'm on I'm on the blacklist. They don't they don't mess with me. So <laughs> I mean, okay. So I, I I probably never told you this, but like 2K reached out to like me and a couple of other people a couple of years ago to ask, like, hey, what do you think will make call mode better? Like, what can we add to it to make it better? I literally I typed out a letter. <laughs> I was like, here's the the smallest things you can you can add to make it better. Do you know how much they took from what I sent them? Hmm. Nothing. Zero. Now, I don't even want to like, and rarely do I ever like promote a lot of the stuff I do on Twitter. But last, the last two games, I've had over a million downloads. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I, the problem I feel like what 2K does is that they worry more about the YouTubers who just do the my rise or or let's do some goofy matches or things like that as opposed the GM to GM mode you know, now that it's it, bad. You know, like which which is cool. Like I get it because you're showcasing the game, but the people who are the lifeblood of it are the creators who upload to community creations. Mm-hmm. 
those are the people. And it's like, I feel like they don't see value in them. If all of us decided to stop creating, I guarantee you people will sit there, and play my rise. They'll play my GM. And once they're done, they're not playing it again. And uh, on, and on community creations, there'll be a lot of face template one. <laughs> I hate that face template. <laughs> I don't even know why they got it in there. It's so bad. That it's the worst one. That it's motherfucker, he, he has no expression whatsoever. It, I mean, it's just. That's a whole gimmick for just, an actual wrestler now. Just face template one. Face template one. one. Yeah, just, oh. that's his name. Every you, time he comes out of the ring. You can't use it for nothing. There's nothing you can use it for because it looks bad on any face texture. Like I, I don't, I don't even understand why they like. And it's funny in this game they added one for each for the male and females. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, why do I still have template one in here? No one can use it. it it's literally a useless face template. It's because the first few change. It's, it's <laughs> the, because people still use it. The ones that they probably care about, that's the one they use, and they oh. slap oh. a picture over it, and they're like. There you go. <laughs> well, not, you know what it is too. There's a lot of people that they'll start a creator wrestler and they won't even look at the face templates. They're like, "I'm just gonna sit here and make this one," you know, and <clears throat> and and it just doesn't work. You gotta try to, like you said, you gotta try to start with a template that kind of resembles who you're making. Yes. You'll have an easier time creating that person, you know, unless you're me, where you. You're making these fucked up faces that nobody looks at them, you know, and uh, nobody looks like them. And what mm -hmm. the fuck are you doing? But yeah. Um, yeah, man. But you know, one thing I got a lot of people say they they like my creator wrestlers, and it's very humbling. But mm -hmm. if it wasn't for Dre hooking me up with them blood template textures, oh my goodness, I use the shit out of those. Yo, I had those in the stash, and it was just like because I was doing my own horror, like. Mm -hmm. Calls and arenas and championships. And I'm just like, all right, I want mine to stand out. Like a lot of people, when they you know create them, they don't put no blood on them. They're like they're they're horror villains, mm -hmm. characters. They they should have blood on them. So it's like I keep them, and it's like my phone is full of like textures. It's very weird. My phone is weird. Like, <laughs> oh, I, I started a folder called WD, WWE assets on my phone. Me yeah, I got too. one too. It's called it's mine's just called stuff for wrestling. It's, mm -hmm. And it's just I a whole five. folder. Because I, I realized every year I was I was like, yo, Dre, you got that one texture? <laughs> <laughs> I asked him that one time and he was like, Man, that was last year. I was like, all right, I gotta go make it myself. <laughs> I, yeah, mean, I, I don't have Photoshop or any of that. So everything I do, I, I'm like a caveman, bro. I make fire. You know what I mean? I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I'm going to find a way to make this shit work. And uh, yeah, those blood textures are handy because some of them just look amazing. When oh, I, make my, I make my texture. Well, this is something I learned from Drake. God, I'm tired of giving this man his flowers. I make my textures. He deserves my... his flowers, bro. I know, but I just have, I've been giving him hell for a couple of years now. And I got to keep a, I have a <laughs> reputation to him. You have a hell quota to give him. Yeah. <laughs> But I make all my textures on my phone now because of him. Really? Yeah, I, I do. I, I do all I do. mine on my phone. Yeah, wow. yeah. I make mine on my. I've been making mine on my phone since since the no, not well, not since, yeah, since the beginning. Wow. That's, yeah, like, that's like a lot of other reason. guys do it on their computers. I it's too much. I don't feel like doing it. I want to be able to just to do it on my phone. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. one of the reasons why I got a foldable phone. Like, I got the Pixel Fold, and I got a stylus, and I just have it open, and I'm just doing my thing in there, get to work. You want to see yep. something? I started doing this last night. Then I'm like, all right, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. See? that That's the work he puts in. That's the work he puts in yeah. right there. That's Crazy. that work. That, that's nice. Like, see? And that's just jump out the window. Do something different, mm -hmm. you know? Like I'm telling, like man, I will sit there and re like I found one dude who did Michael Jackson. I just followed them. I was like, oh, the, the one you put. Oh, in that the Michael Jackson was clean. Oh my goodness, I had to retweet it. I was like, man, this is crazy. I I mm. couldn't do this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I, I love seeing when people are creative. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't have to be real wrestlers. It could be anybody. Mm -hmm. And and like and 
Steve, like as far as like horror characters go, it's you and this one other guy called like horror fan. Mm -hmm. Like y'all, y'all are the two that I, I don't even need to make anybody. I can just download your stuff and I'm good. Like I, I got my my you know, right. Everyone's gonna have their own look, their own move set. Mm -hmm. It's like making them is only a quarter of the job. You know what I right. mean? So. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, I, I I can't tell you how many fucking Royal Rumbles I've watched <laughs> on YouTube. I'm like, that's my guy, that's my guy, and I love that. It's so cool, yeah. you know, because you could hear like when the people are playing as them, how excited they get, you know. It's like, oh, just make sure that people give you your your credit sometimes. But as for well, last day. year, last year was the first time that uh someone actually stole my shit and then re-uploaded it. Welcome to the family. <laughs> yeah, welcome. <laughs> How you doing? That's exactly what you said to me last year when I told you, man, someone stole my Victor Crowley. You're like, welcome to the family. <laughs> yeah, it's official now. You're, you're officially in the... Yeah. I'm and not, they'll, I'm they'll, not they'll as big as stealing. either one of y'all, and I've I've been stolen from listen, by people bigger than me. So Listen, when, when they start stealing your search tags, too, that's when you, <laughs> yeah. you up there. <laughs> you up there. <laughs> You've done something right. You, you, know what, you know what I did this year was tricky as fuck though. Like I love making Reagan from The Exorcist. Yeah, I, I would you always, always do a great job with like the face, regardless if it's a, like oh like you have to use the man template or woman's template. You're really good at that, and it's like I got you got to give you your flowers on that. Thank you. But this year, because I wanted to use Reagan more, I started with a base model of a guy, and. To get that head to look like an 11 year old girl, that shit took time. <laughs> like, I can't, I, I don't think I'd ever even be able to do that shit again, you know? Because, <laughs> like, that was like the cheeks and the jawline. You had a, oh man. But now, when I look, it's probably one of the best ones that I've done. It, it, it looks spot on. It definitely looks spot on. And we'll have the pictures in here, you know, so you guys can see. <laughs> but uh yeah man I, and you know like the another thing that i wanted to ask you in regards to like with with wrestling when did you start getting into it like when did you start becoming a fan oh man ever since fucking i was a little kid man you see being once my parents kind of acclimated to me getting up late at night and watching tv mm -hmm. uh wrestling when i was a little kid was on at 11 o'clock at night on Channel 9, you know? And then after wrestling, it was always on a Friday night. Yeah, Friday night. And then after wrestling, there was this joint called Fright Night, which was like they would show a horror movie after wrestling. So to me, I started tuning into wrestling because I didn't want to miss the beginning of Fright Night, you know? And so then I'm like, oh, wait. Let's see what this motherfucker is going to do now. So then I started doing, I started watching wrestling and then Fright Night. And I just fell in love with it, man. I, I, and I think for a lot of, a lot of weird reasons, being that my dad was a bastard who beat the shit out of me, like my mm -hmm. whole life, you know, um, when it came to wrestling, I got to see the good guys, the bad guys lose. Mm -hmm. And so it was that hero thing to me, the, the adversity and it, they they just tell a good story you know and it just like i i don't ever remember not being a wrestling fan i used to i used to order all the pay-per-views when you had to order them like, <laughs> right you know or, or i'd oh, wait for somebody to take that order shit, them order them you know <laughs> here's this box you can hook up to your tv you could hook it up but you shouldn't use it you know so you yeah. will never know yeah. So, and then I'll never forget one night I had one, my dad bought a satellite dish for the house, which back in the day, this shit, look, your house looked like NASA if it had one of these things on it. Right. And then I was, and that blew my mind because once you had satellite, you had like a million fucking channels. So right. one night I'm fucking, I'm going through the bands. And it's funny when you go through the bands, the satellite dish on your house moves. Oh, right? wow. so you hear, oh, you talking about them big yard yeah. satellites. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. My night. cousin had one. It got struck by lightning twice. 
I believe it, you know? So I was sitting there one night and I'm, I'm fucking, I'm like, all right, let's see what's on this band. And that's when I, I ran across what was originally known as Eastern championship wrestling. And I was like, Oh, well, what channel was this on for you? It, it was on a Philadelphia channel, okay. you know, and it was Tommy Cairo beating the shit at a Tommy Dreamer, <laughs> you know, and I was just like, that looks real, you know, and then then I just started, I started going to ECW, you know, oh. yeah, I'm on a ton of ECW shows back when I had hair, so that's why I'm oh. unrecognizable. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah man i i was uh, i was there for a lot of the hardcore heavens i was there for mm. oh so many of them the night the line was crossed I, there was just so many cool wow. and the ecw arena was like fucking i'll never my my favorite memory from the ecw arena is gonna be that place was just so sleazy it was just sleazy right so they were they were getting ready to have a barbed wire match, and mm -hmm. so before they started, I I went to the bathroom, and there's this guy and his son just standing there peeing on the wall together, and I'm like, man, this is family, you know? <laughs> it's the strangest thing. And then I go, then I finish. I don't know why they're peeing on the wall, but they looked like they were bonding. So I was like, all right, good on you. Don't ask, bro. So I go back out, right? And now they start wrapping the ring with barbed wire, and then they bring out Kimono Wanalea to strip at the eagle's nest. And I'm like, where am I? How is this? <laughs> you yeah. were in the danger zone, for real. Oh, bro, my goodness. Going to ECW in its day was like going to Action Park. You get fucked up in the front row, bro. I had a pit bull land on me. I still got the bruise. It's amazing. Yeah, he said a oh boy. my goodness. That is wild. <laughs> I'm happy I didn't go there back then. I, well, I was too young, honestly. Yeah, I, I found ECW in like 98 mm -hmm. on the MSG network. Mm -hmm. I found it by accident. Yeah, it yeah, was like me too. Channel, channel 15 where I was at. I, was like, I think we all found it by accident. Yeah, it's like I just stumbled on it. I was up late. I was just going through channels and I was like, the first thing I saw when I saw ECW was RVD. He had that damn chair. And he did a van terminator with that damn chair all the way across the ring. I was like, oh, what am I watching now? This is mm -hmm. this is not what I'm used to. Let me tune in. And then Francine yeah. got pile drives. I'm like, what am I really watching now? Like, I, I stumbled on it with Shane Douglas cutting a promo. Mm -hmm. And I was like, isn't that Dean Douglas? I'm like, wait a minute. I thought he was in WWF. I was like, oh, okay, he coming from. All right, cool, bet. Like, I'll watch this. And <laughs> then it was difficult to watch because I think they got taken off the of MSG and then, then they ended up on TNN. And I was like, okay, cool, now I can watch them on a regular basis. But yeah, man, that, that was a great time in the 90s. Kids now would never. I mean, I guess they see it now because it's so much wrestling that's on now. I mean, AEW. AEW yeah. kind of. Pushes the boundary a little bit. You think so, dude? That left more so Darby than Allen, that Darby. Did you see that Darby Allen? Go yeah. yeah, Darby's a psycho. But you went to ECW. Come on now. You oh, no. it's for not what bad. for but what today's wrestling it. is? Yeah, AEW pushes the limit way more than WWE does. Yeah. I would of agree. Course. But you have to look at it as of today's wrestling. We're all it, it, heading in the. You know the wrong direction with age, so we've been around long enough to see what it was when getting whacked over the head with a chair was a norm, and you were just like, "Yeah, I hope he's okay." And now it's just like, "Man, that's instant CTE." Mm -hmm. You know, it was different back then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you look at people like Cactus, and you see the damage that's been done to them. You know, what yeah, I mean? yeah. Mick Foley could barely walk straight. You know, it's it's scary it's seeing, and you see that limp. And you know how many times he's been hitting the head with a chair, you know? So many yeah. times as we've seen, because I'm pretty sure that there were some times that one of them, I mean, the worst one still will always be the rock playing whack-a-mole with this man. Oh, yeah. Hands. He, was, <laughs> he was folding that chair over his head, man. That was, yeah, that yeah, was the, nuts. Did you the see part. the rock concert from last night? 
Okay, I think he's going to the to to the throwback well one too many times. It's like hey, look, gotta... I did I did like the transition though from his new music to his Hollywood music. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. probably the favorite part of that segment. That was done very well. Yeah, now, I like Heel Rock. Heel Rock is great. We haven't seen it in so long though. Right, and that will, always makes me question of well, I mean, you could tell well creative now since it's under you know Triple H, it's. It's completely different. They you were you were allowed to you know step outside the box mm-hmm. and use the word professional wrestling too. That's that's like mm-hmm. the one thing that I like the most that they just say pro wrestling. Well, you yeah, know he who up. should not be named is probably at his house hoping that he can get some of this stuff off him so he can get back in charge. He probably rolling around his can't sleep at night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're calling it professional wrestling. I hate it. <laughs> who are these wrestlers from these other companies with championships and my baby? Yeah, uh, he's he's having but, a baby. Um, he's having a fit right now. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but but Steve, who's who's your uh, top five wrestlers? Hmm. Roman Reigns, love. Oh, him. he is just for these last several years, he's put on a clinic. He really has. He is. There's something a lot of wrestlers don't have, or they're trying to find, and it's presence. Mm. Like you know when they're in a room. And you got that big championship feel when you see them. So Roman Reigns, I love. Are you talking about living or all time? All time. All time. It doesn't have to be current day. Roman Reigns, Rowdy Roddy Piper, Abdullah the Butcher. That's interesting. He's a crazy motherfucker. <laughs> Stone Cold and Razor Ramon. Oh, wow. That's, wow. That's a list right there. That is a list. I can appreciate some of them. Hmm. I mean, Abdul is an interesting one to me. Yeah, but that's that's an interesting one for top five. Abdul, have you ever watched an Abdullah the Butcher match? I have. He doesn't do much. He... But go, look up Mexico Abdullah the Butcher or Japan Abdullah the Butcher. This motherfucker was crazy. <laughs> he would go into the crowd and the crowd would scatter. You know? Uh. It just, I don't, it, it, he just, he was, you know what, it, I think I have a soft spot for him because mm. like when I was a little kid, there wasn't all, there was no internet, first of all. So I would go to the store and steal a fucking wrestling magazine, right? Put that shit in my jacket. You know, I don't care. I stole wrestling magazine. I stole horror magazine. I don't fucking, I was fucking 11. I had no money. So, <laughs> but back in the day, <laughs> like the wrestling magazines, it was, the cover was in color and all the pages were in black and white. So I used to see constantly these pictures of this dude bleeding and stabbing people with forks. And I'm like, who is this guy? So it ended up being Abdullah the Butcher. So he was the one that caught my eye from a mm-hmm. little bit because I almost kind of associated with him with the horror genre because it was mm-hmm. so bad. Because he was doing this crazy shit. So Abdul, every year I get a 2K game, first thing I make is Abdul the Butcher. First uh, thing. I, matter of fact, I've been doing that for, ever since they introduced Creator Wrestling. Abdul I actually have a um, a really good face texture for you. Oh, really? Yeah, I found one. I stumbled on it, too. Oh, I stumbled on it. I wasn't even looking. I just stumbled on it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, Abdul is always first, but you know what? I don't, I don't give Abdullah his accurate move set either. I give no, him crazy shit. Yeah, you got to. You can't because yeah. you wouldn't be able to fill out his move set if you gave him what he actually <laughs> did. He punches and kicks. That's what he does. There wasn't no big moves, no high spots, no, nothing right. like that. When you see him somersault off the top rope, it's funny, you know, it's this <laughs> big ass guy, you know. So, yeah, right. I've been. My brother would have Abdullah the Butcher ever since I was playing video games. Mm, I hear that. Yeah, I mean, I you know what? For me, it's I think it's just like the first character. I, I enjoy making myself because I always kind of something I've been doing recently is like kind of copying myself off of like actual wrestlers. So it's like it's based on like my top five, which is a rotating top five. But you have some of the same characters, like the Great Muda, mm. always going to be in my top five. Uh, Shane Douglas. Um, Hayabusa, um, The Undertakers, and Triple H is in there. So it's just like, I like to like kind of base my character off of one of those every year. So it's just like, for me, it's like, okay, how do I 
inject their character into mine and make it fit. That's mm -hmm. always something that I enjoy to do. But like with characters, like I, I like to do the my rise, mm -hmm. and then make their move sets completely insane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to do. So I'll use an actual wrestler and just make their move set something I think they can do. <laughs> you know what I do with my rise is I don't go crazy. I make the best wrestler I can out of the stock stuff. Mm. Because I don't I don't transfer the my rise people over to my game. I might this year though, because I made a banging version of Trash from uh, Return of the Living Dead. Who is uh, she? Looks really good. I was like, wow, I, that's not bad. But uh, it's usually I make the goofiest guy I can with the stock stuff, and then I because they always have those voice like like this year's fucking guy's voice is atrocious. Like, hey man, what are you picking on me for? It's like, what dude? Where did you find this guy? The, 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 I don't even know. He's like he the guy's voice in in this year's 2K is like the stereotypical white guy voice that everybody makes fun of. You know what I mean? It really is. Oh man. Yeah, they, they got I think like the voice actors that they hire for this, I feel like they really need to bring in someone who's an actual wrestler. Mm -hmm. I think they just get like an actor. And I they did the one year, the AJ. That was Austin Aries. That was like 10, 15 years ago. Nah, AJ uh, Kirsch, or however you pronounce his last name. Is he a real wrestler? I'm just messing around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he doesn't have the voice, I don't think. I don't think he has the voice. I don't think he, I don't, I'm not sure if he did it this year or not, but I know he did it the year of Buzz. The, the, that year, was, that was mm -hmm. the one where he kind of blew up. He would. Yeah, they was using them a lot on TV too. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, know. Who, you know who the most surprising character I like right now is is Dominic Mysterio. I hated him, really, but he just makes Dominic Mysterio and r Truth are endlessly entertaining. r Truth <laughs> is the man, dude. When he went to fucking that some other what was it the thing he did? He went he, to Austria. He went to Austria instead of Australia. I was <laughs> laughing my ass off. And when DIY saved him and he thought they would BX, that shit is so funny, man. Right. He comes no, out mean, the Ladies Royal Rumble. I mean, I love him. He's he's definitely I mean, you could you could put him anywhere and he'll make it work. Like and but you know what? Another thing that I wish before he retires, I wish they give him like a really great run. Mm -hmm. Not even like championship wise, but show his athleticism like in a storyline. Mm -hmm. And I think like that's something that I feel like because it's I like don't think anybody's the, done that with him since he was with TNA. Since TNA. Yeah. Since TNA. Who I'd like to see actually get a good WWE run. And he's getting up there too, is Jay Lethal. I love Jay Lethal. That dude that's is entertaining and athletic. I would mm -hmm. love to see him get like a a real run. Uh, I think Man, I, I love AEW, but uh, pairing him up with Jeff Jarrett, it, it, that just don't do it for me. Yeah, um, I, it, it, it doesn't do it make sense. AEW needs to stop being the retirement home. They got all these young people there. Showcase them. Build the talent, man. Like, right. No one wants to see Paul White. I love the big show, but I don't want to see him wrestle, you know? <sighs> I don't think anybody does at this point. I'm scared to yeah. watch him walk. To be honest, his body's gonna fail him. He needs to stop because of that hit is. That's what I'm saying. They, they, they keep getting all of the. I mean, yeah, Osprey is a great get. Mercedes Monet is a great get, but mm -hmm. they have a lot of fucking people on their roster, and so a lot of people aren't getting any time at all. It, it's almost like they're. They're kind of pulling a WWE right now where you have all this talent, but you don't know what to do with any of them. You use them all. I kind of yeah. miss the darks for those because they <sighs> they had some matches on dark. I don't care what nobody says. Dark mm -hmm. and dark elevation. You could find some bangers on those where they were just like, wow. Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to forget the AEW video game, though. I got to tell you. It's it's rough. Yeah. It's just it's just the controls. If they gave us the ability to change the controls to something we can manage better, I feel like more people will play it. But I just don't think it's, so it's you just you were banging I'm, on the 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 creation thing. I no, know. I mean honestly, no, you okay. want to talk about face template one? 
that game's creator wrestler is face template one from <laughs> the top whole top. thing is just face template one. <laughs> it's, it's there is nothing to do in there. Nothing. Oh look, here's a t-shirt with a flag on it. Great. Thank you. I'm gonna go out there and show my Bolivian pride for some reason. <laughs> what am I gonna do with this? Uh, we uh, wasn't supposed to do this. <laughs> there's a whole section of flag shirts. I'm like, really? I don't I I can't listen. I believe in them. I feel like it's gonna get better. I truly I do. How? I'm not even playing. I, 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 you got to give them time. This is you. I know, but this is Ukes we're talking about. Give them time. They will. They will make us proud. Bro, they will. They'll do it. I believe in them. I'm the guy that bought all three of them season passes. Okay. Me and too. It, it's like Ooh. Ooh, Claudio Castagnoli. All right. You know, Swerve Strickland. That dude is another level. Yes. Oh yeah. Him and Prince right. Lana, another level. I just the one thing I worry about is that he has such a, a a great following right now, and he's so over. But they still have plans to keep the title on Joe, mm. so they won't be able to do what they need to do with Swerve right. to make him a champion because they still got these plans with Joe. But That's you, the one thing I worry about. You know what's great though. This is what it's all about, man. Yeah. Three grown ass adults sitting here talking about shit that some motherfucker is writing in their basement, right? And mm -hmm. we're talking about this shit like it's, you know, life or death. But that's, I think, the magic of wrestling. And I think that's why wrestling fans are as passionate as we are. It's just they're telling these interesting stories and you get behind these characters in ways you never would have expected you know i care what happens with mjf you know i care mm -hmm. what happens with swerve strickland you know, want to see them succeed it, it's just like that's a testament to great writing you know they do have great right. writing i think yeah. they they get a little unfocused like aew sometimes feels very unfocused to me like they have a great chance to pursue the storyline with this character that they come up with and they've nurtured and sometimes that character falls by the wayside my like, god mm -hmm. damn like wardlow is done you know Jeez, done. so yeah <laughs> i think wardlow's a little self-inflicted though yeah he, <laughs> he came I, I i feel like his turn on mjf was too foreshadowed mm -hmm. like it was way too seen like I had the thought when I was watching it, I was thinking about Batista turning on evolution. Like mm -hmm. that's what it felt like to me when I right. was watching it. Like he was always around hearing this and doing that. And even though the crowd was behind him, I just, I didn't like how it, like how that turn happened. Like he should have, it should have been more of a, uh, an involvement of him and then more of a storyline after that. Cause after that, the MJF Wardlow, they kind of kept them separated for a minute. Yeah, they didn't do nothing. And it, it, that was where the story was. That was how you build Wardlow. MJF mm -hmm. was already pretty much established as an AEW faith. Go mm -hmm. ahead and get Wardlow in there. Even if you turn him heel later, they could have worked that angle to whatever else was going on. Because, And I love factions. Drake can attest to this. I've had way too many call factions, but there's too many fucking factions in AEW and I done lost track of who's where. Uh, bro, I, I was trying to keep track. I really did. There's there was at one point there was at least eight factions. But that's that's if you watch New Japan, that's all they are is factions. Mm -hmm. It's just groups that's, fighting that's each other. True, but like you ever watch, you ever watch the, the New Japan fucking death matches from back in the day? Yes. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. um, oh beautiful. Oh that's FMW. Oh, we oh, talking about oh, oh yeah, they get nasty. Yeah, yeah, they out their mind. They out their mind. We like it. I know? saw this one match where they fought down a street into a into like one of those Japanese bathhouses and into the bathroom, mm -hmm. and there was literally a dude sitting there taking a shit in a bucket while these two guys were fighting in front of him. I never seen no shit like that before in my life. 
Yeah, the, and that's why it's not around no more. Well, no, FMW is yeah. kind of around. It's it's weird, <laughs> but um, here here's something you'll like, Steve. You'll like this AEW, and this. And, and you know what? My whole thing now is I, I I love characters who who stand out, and this is one character. And Ken already knows what I'm thinking about right now. The one character in AEW who who has the best winning record, right, and is a horror character, Abaddon. What do you think about that character? Love Abaddon. I, I think Abaddon, she really, really embodies what it means. Like her interviews, if you watch her interviews, she is always in character. And mm-hmm. I, I like when people don't break KFAB, you know? And she's fucking scary looking to, to boot, you <laughs> yeah. know? And so I love Abaddon. I, I, I even her entrance in the AEW video game. I even like, even though it's three seconds, right? It, it, you know, it's like, they, I got to throw the fire. Right. <laughs> so so it, it's like, she, I could see her going so much farther, you know, but again, mm-hmm. where is she? Now? You know, what is she? She's doing? ring of honor. Yeah. And it's just, here's the thing I don't like. And she gets all these wins consistently week after week. Then they have her on dark. And this, you know, taking a little bit back. She'll get wins, wins. Goes up against against the champion, lose. Mm-hmm. Every time. And it's just like, how somebody with the, what, 89, maybe 90% win chance, because, you know, records uh, matter, um, loses against the champions every time. Mm-hmm. But you you got the most wins. Mm-hmm. You I, feel like that's how they, I feel like that's how they set her up, though. Because yeah. Dark and Dark Elevation was a lot of these guys that would get wins, and then you'd see them on Dynamite long enough to fight, let's say, the TNT champion. And when you look at their record when they're coming out, you're like, oh, they only got like four losses. Mm-hmm. I don't remember ever seeing them because a lot of people didn't know Dark and Dark Elevation existed unless right. you were a big fan. So you're seeing this guy with 22 and four, and you're like, oh, you might give him a run. And then he gets squashed out and like Trisha Dora, another one we've talked about. So yeah. I I met her in person. You, yeah, she's is, is amazing, an amazing wrestler. I felt like she should have been the TNT champion, but they just they just wasted her away. And now I think she's in Ring of Honor too. Yeah, with the rest of the infantry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I feel like Abaddon has, as far as like a horror character goes in wrestling, she is the the. I think she the top, embodies the it the best. Yeah. Yeah. I think she embodies it the best because that's her. Yeah. I think that's like the the biggest thing because it's like when you try to give like a scary kind of gimmick to like and I am just gonna use that as an example as to like a, a female wrestler, it's like they have to really want that. Yeah. And it's like some of them can't like, for example, Alexa Bliss. Mm-hmm. She was okay, but you didn't believe it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's just I like think I feel Kyle like, is scarier than Alexa Bliss. Yes, very true, <laughs> very true. Because she's in, because she, like, that's her, that's, like, not her outside the ring, but she follows the the Viking waves, you know what I'm saying? So, it, yeah. like, it it works, you know what I'm saying? It's like, Alexa Bliss has Disney tattoos, like, come on, like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's not gonna, it, it doesn't she's, compute. She's more or less like the Harley Quinn, she really is. You yeah. Know, that's yeah. the one she's in. And she's good at it too. Alexa Bliss, whip your ass. Yeah, she's yeah, definitely. But yeah. I, I think that yeah, Abaddon, you can't fake that shit. You know, you see that it's part of her personality. Right. And it's great that she found an avenue in which to do that. I just wish she would get more time. You know. Yeah, she absolutely. Said, some recognition. You know, there have been a lot I, of horror characters over the years, and few of them ever really made it. I mean. Arguably, you could say The Undertaker's a horror character. Um, yeah. You know, there was Papa Shango, who I loved. You know, I mm-hmm. hate Papa Shango ain't in the game. He's, I love him. Um, Boogeyman. Boogeyman. Boogeyman, yeah. Boogeyman, yeah. He still gets his props. Yeah. You know. He's cool. Gangrel. Gangrel. Do you I remember? met him. He's cool. You remember when fucking Papa Shango made the Ultimate Warrior's hat bleed? It was the black goo, the whatever, the ink. Boy, 
I think that was the end of Papa Shango. Uh, <laughs> that mistimed something or another at WrestleMania. Yeah, that was a uh, that was something. But yeah, yeah. I, I think when it comes to especially a specific character that's thematically about something, I, I, I think that the person portraying this character has to lend that authenticity to it in order for it to be successful. All right. No, like that's definitely... The Undertaker. The Undertaker, he carried that shit for decades. You know? We we're not counting the American badass stint. That no, I, I like the American badass stint. Yeah. I, I could wipe it from history and be all right myself. <laughs> you know, he, it could have made him more too human. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it, it took but a then, lot of the allure of the dead man away. Yeah, yeah but they take that. they take things too far too, you know, like like uh, the Undertaker got powers. I'm like, no one knows he has powers, bro. You know, he, he didn't bury Kane. You know, they take it a little too far. There's light Kane too, and masked yeah. Kane, which was basically a wrestling version of Michael Myers. Let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and even that movie Kane was in, where he played that character Jacob Goodnight, see no evil. That shit was good. You liked it? If you go back and watch it now. His movement is so violent. Like he's mm. he spends the entire movie throwing these little people around, you know? And it's funny to see. I, I have a little bit of a soft spot for Sp see no evil. See no we're evil. not talking about Glenn Jacobs, we're talking about Kane. Right. right. <laughs> you got you gotta the difference between the two. Kane Glenn Jacobs is a really nice guy. Yeah, we can't we can't talk about that because he 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 just makes the cane just like that's not Kane. That can't be Kane. He's so soft spoken and smiles. The fuck <laughs> is this? <laughs> I I don't know. Like, okay. I feel like because I watch so many horror movies, like I've gotten to the point like I'm like desensitized. So mm -hmm. it's like I can see like Oh, welcome to the family. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's like I will watch it and I'm just like, this not doing it for me. Like, it's not, it's, for me, horror movies don't even have to be scary no more. Like, I appreciate the, the, the horror aspect, I guess. Like, just them going to that level. Like, for an example, the Terrifier, they went there. They, 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 you know, they went oh, far. Yeah. And really? I appreciated it. To where it's I almost still, funny to me. I like it. it I makes was about me to say, laugh. I did. I did laugh when old girl was cleaning the the window. The car? I told Ray about oh that. Oh my! She was cleaning the car window. He just <laughs> bong. I was like, "Yep." I could. I was laughing. You so seen hard. The, the, the hair just. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Meanwhile, I, I, my wife is just like, "I was like, you're the one that's actually more of a horror fan than me. You couldn't take that. What's what's wrong with you? Are you okay?" Uh, you know, it's funny that scene with the hair. Um, the only reason that shot's even in the movie is because the force of that window breaking knocked over the camera. <laughs> so that's why we didn't you didn't get that full head explosion thing. So I was like, ah, oh, fuck it, just throw the scalp against the wall. <laughs> it, it worked. You had to do something. It's improvising. Yeah. <laughs> when I watched oh it, I spit God. water all over my screen laughing. That was that was a great time. Yeah, he's, oh my goodness. Art, Art's a great character. I, I think people, I think he resonates with people because of his more humanistic tendencies. You know, like he'll he'll go do his laundry, or he'll fucking get a glass of water, and he'll he'll do shit that you don't see, like the other people doing, like Jason or Freddy or anything like that. So I, I think people relate to him because of his human side, and you know, you you forget that this dude is absolute evil you, you kind of want to have a drink with them and hang out you know it, it's weird i think that's the the hallmark of a good character you know when you can you can they they just transcend what they're doing like roman reigns transcends what he's doing you know the rock yeah. transcends what he does credit. rick flair will forever be the 80s playboy wheel and deal and kiss stealing son of a gun you know yeah rick flair is that i don't even rick see rick flair, flair as a real his... person I just he, see him as a lives, character. He lives his outside too. Like you go to Charlotte, North Carolina, and he is everywhere. Mm -hmm. Every, like everything you see down there. As she, if she's going to the right park, yeah, that's all you see is something that has Ric Flair's face and name on it. 
My brother was telling me he was smoking Ric Flair's weed last night. Yeah, he's got his own. He's got his own weed line. Yeah, he says woo right on the package. Yep, Ric Flair is everywhere. That's wild. supposed to have died three hearts ago, but he's still here kicking. Mm. God bless him. <laughs> yeah, right. he's looking real bad, but God bless him. I, I mean, hey, he's still around. Time, he's kicking. Father Time is giving him them knife edge chops now. And they really, he really is. <laughs> You right. What you All the time, you you Rick Flair, the knife edge chucks. I don't know why you why you were so surprised, Dre. This this That's is me. So messed up. What would you say? <laughs> he sits all the time, knife edge chucks. Hey, oh well, my! Rick Flair's on his knees, like no, no. <laughs> Up to the eye, low blow. Uh, <laughs> that's how he gets away. Oh my goodness, that's too funny. My goodness, Steve, thank you for coming on the podcast, man. I thank appreciate you. it. My pleasure, bro. Thank you. Oh this, my this was goodness. a great time. It was a real honor for me. Seriously. Oh, no, this is an honor for me. Like, remember, we were in talks of having you on a minute ago, but I was just like, it got to be the right time. I want to just have you jump on, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate And we got to, you know, we got to get you on later, um, yeah, at, at a later date for, mm-hmm. for reasons. I would love to come back. Yes. For thank reason. you. And maybe you'll let me know this time? No. <laughs> it's <laughs> some of them. It'll just pop up. I just put, my, just put myself in these situations. Whatever. Yeah, it's but, but, cool. Thank you guys for watching. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, like, uh, Share, subscribe, all that great stuff. Oh, also, you know, when when Steve's book come out, we're going to retweet that. We'll put the link, whatever. You know, we'll we'll make sure, you know, people get to see it. And watch all this stuff. Everything that he's uh, produced, executive produced, all that. You know what I'm saying? I also look up his calls, too, because they are really good. That, too. You know what's funny? What's funny is my 2K creator name is Badass Monster Party or something like that, or, or Baddest Monster Party. I never it even is? knew that. They just gave me that name. Nice. That, that was hilarious. That's wild, because it, it shows me it's um Uncle Creepy. Yeah, but when the I... creator name. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. Got you. Yep. I got Baddest Monster Party by accident. And I'm like, well, <laughs> that works. <laughs> hey, sometimes the universe just knows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, thank you guys for watching. Um, like, subscribe, comment, all that great stuff. Catch you on the next video. His shit. Way better than my <laughs> He's over there. No, no, online. we ain't doing that. We're not doing that. We're not, we're not doing that. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about me. But <laughs> download the humble guy stuff. <laughs> humble? Oh. I don't know who he's talking about. <laughs> we're gonna get this outro eventually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everything I do goes to hell, guys. Sorry. I love it. I love it. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. All right. Let me stop.